Hello, hello, my name is Jacqueline. I'm a corporate flight attendant. This is my cat, Logan. He is not leaving me alone, so he is going to co-host this video with me. Oh my gosh, the chaos. Let's try this again. Hello, hello, my name is Jacqueline. I am a corporate flight attendant and welcome to my YouTube channel, Jacqueline Travels. I recently published a video and in that video, I asked you guys if you liked quicker videos slash quick tip sort of things. And so that's what I'm filming today. I had a viewer on one of my comment threads ask a decent amount of questions. And I thought I would quickly answer those. Uh, I did ask her for permission. She has not since responded to that comment, um, but it's a public page. She has a public page. So I'm not gonna say her name, but I am gonna answer the questions that she asked just because they're all related to flight attending. And this is not the first time that I have been asked these questions. So I definitely think it's useful information for me to be sharing. All right, so getting into the answer portion of this quick video. Uh, what you haven't talked about in depth is coming into the job with a good credit rating, enough to qualify for a credit card that allows you to charge between $10,000 and $12,000 worth of food and drinks in a month to stock up for the plane on each trip. I was not credit checked when I came into this. You're not gonna get credit checked if you're a corporate flight attendant every time that you work a contract trip. However, you do need to have a credit card with a high credit limit. I was asked in my interview if I had a credit card, if I was able to charge maybe $10,000 at a time. So you're not gonna get approved for that credit limit unless you have good credit. So technically, yes, you do have to have good credit coming into this job. It's not necessarily the kind of job where you can start really building up credit um, because at any given time, you will have a balance on your credit card while you're waiting for your employer or the contractor to reimburse you for the money that you spent to cater the airplane, to stay in hotels, to eat your crew meals, and all of that sort of thing. So yes, Good credit is definitely helpful. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean though that you will not get a job unless you have good credit. For example, the pilots could help you cover your hotel bills. They'd probably be more than willing to pick up those extra hotel points. They will pay for your meals on the road and expense it. Perhaps they could pay for your catering. I don't really know how that would go before the trip, like for your first flight out because the pilots aren't grocery shopping with you at that point. But if you order catering on the road, you could ask them to provide their credit card information for the catering company. And then to elaborate a little bit more on this, uh, some companies do offer company credit cards. So if you're issued a company credit card, you don't have to worry about having the $10,000 personal line of credit yourself. So hopefully that answers question number one. All right, the next statement slash question, you haven't talked about the primary charter's passenger preference sheet, or if you get 14 preference sheets, if all seats are full. Yes, you will get a preference sheet for each passenger. If you are new to my channel and you're not sure what that means, I am given a list of what my passengers wanna eat, what they don't wanna eat, things that they like, things that they don't like, things that they're allergic to, things to absolutely not have on the plane hence the passenger preference sheet. So I'm always given a passenger preference sheet for the primary person who is chartering out the flight. Typically information will be presented about the guests who are on board too. So I try to come up with a few different meal options and a few different snack options that make every person who I've received their preference sheet uh, just to make them all happy. So I don't wanna get 14 different meals for each person on the plane. It's already chaotic trying to feed that many people in a small space. So I try to come up with two, maybe three meals that will make everybody happy, that not everybody is allergic to, that sort of thing. So uh, it does become tricky. Luckily, I haven't seen like crazy high demand passengers wanting totally separate things. Like generally people will be okay with this option, option A or option B. 
So I hope it continues to stay that way. Um, generally, I always have extra meals on board, like for snacks and stuff. I always have stuff for charcuterie. I always have stuff for cheese plates, for fruit and veggie plates, a little dessert. And then I always keep um, like vegetarian pre-cooked meals that you just open and microwave and then microwave pouches of rice, same style format on that. So I always keep those on the plane just in case I run into a situation where I didn't get a preference sheet or we picked up someone new on the flight and I just have to provide extra catering for them. All right, next up. Also, coming into the job with cooking skills and being able to fully prepare a meal for 14 people if your plane is full. Now, I'm gonna be honest, if you know how to cook, your life is certainly easier on the airplane. But if you don't know how to cook, that does not mean you cannot get a job as a corporate flight attendant. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you've seen I pick up food from restaurants. I picked up pre-made meals from supermarkets. I order airline catering and they deliver the food and then I just spruce it up a little bit and plate it nice. In all of those scenarios, I'm not actually cooking the meals for anyone. All the food's being delivered and I'm putting it on a plate. I'm storing it on board at good temperatures and when passengers are ready, I heat their food up. I throw a fresh little garnish on there and then I send it out into the world. So if you don't know how to cook, don't be worried. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get a job as a corporate flight attendant, but cooking will also make your resume look better. Uh, I've talked about the importance of taking pictures of all your meals. And if you are applying for jobs, send out your resume, your cover letter, and then also send out a food portfolio. And it can be items that you have cooked or it can be items that you have plated. So I think more importantly than knowing how to cook would be knowing how to plate food and either taking a food plating class or taking tutorials online like here on YouTube, something like that. Uh, but a reason why cooking does come in handy is if the trip is changing and you don't have time to wait for a restaurant to prepare meals or airline catering, usually like a four hour notice. Uh, if you don't get notice in four hours that your trip is changing and you need to be on an airplane, you have to go to the grocery store and come up with something that you can cook on board. So having cooking skills will definitely save you if you are in a predicament like that, uh, but it's not essential to getting the job it will give you an up on the competition. So take with that what you want, maybe practice cooking if you're not really a cooking sort of person. And that doesn't mean you have to cook like everything. You don't have to be a sushi chef and a baker and this, that, or the other thing. Like make one dish and make it super, super well. And this is great if you're a contract flight attendant, you have that one dish in your back pocket, you see different passengers all the time, constantly make that one dish for them and make it awesome. All right, the next thing that was asked, do you carry a binder with places to order foods from various catering companies in all of the cities that you travel to, or is that referenced on your laptop or on your phone? Do you travel with your laptop? Uh, I do not carry names of catering companies from every city that I go to, just because I already carry enough junk with me and I'm trying to keep my life easy. So the way that I find catering companies for the airlines uh, when I'm flying into a new city is I always know what FBO that I'm flying into and I'll call them usually the day before I fly in just because I want to make sure I'm getting the info that I need but I'll call the FBO a day before I fly in I will ask them hey what catering companies deliver to the FBO and which ones would you recommend the FBO they keep track of all of that stuff so I don't need to carry all of that with me. Someone at the FBO will usually email me the name or they'll email me the menu. So before I leave for my trip, I'll take a look at the menu. I'll decide if it's a caterer that I think the food sounds good. I'll go online and I'll check out reviews. And that's basically how I choose my airline caterer. Uh, there are a lot of times when I just prefer to use restaurants. I worry that a caterer might not deliver or their food, it's not something that I've tried, so I wouldn't feel comfortable giving it to my passengers because I just don't know what the presentation is gonna look like or if the food is gonna taste good. So I, I will use an airline caterer, but I just prefer to go to local restaurants in the area. Plus I think when you're traveling and seeing the world, it's exciting to experience local cuisine. And I like a theme kind of on my trip. So if I'm leaving the Caribbean, I wanna pick up a local Caribbean dish, I will go to a local Caribbean restaurant and get that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I don't carry a binder with me. Uh, I've gone to like Florida a million and a half times, so I know what caterer that I like to use out of there. Um, but 
generally, yeah, I'll just call the FBO if I need a catering recommendation or I'll even post it on social media. I follow a lot of corporate flight attendants and we like to help each other out. So I'll say, hey, I'm gonna be in XYZ city. What caterer do you recommend? Is there a good restaurant nearby? What do you guys think? So online is also a good resource. Talk to your followers, let's all help each other. And I guess I didn't really answer the end of the question. Do you carry your laptop? I used to carry my laptop all the time because I was doing more contracting and expense reports were more difficult on the lap, uh, on the contracting side, so I needed my laptop. Now that I'm fully employed with my company, there's an app for us to do expense reports, so I don't carry my laptop with me anymore. Again, I like to keep life simple. I don't wanna tote everything from city to city, from airplane to hotel. I just keep my laptop at home, and if there's something that needs to be done, I'll, I'll do it either before I leave for my trip or when I get home. Okay, and then the last thing that was said, um, food plating is an attractively special skill. It's not just dumping food on a plate and serving it. I guess I should have read that one before I thought I was going to be answering a question. This does kind of tie into the question that was asked earlier, if you need to cook, and I said no, food plating is more important. So I think you guys are realizing food plating is more important. Uh, there's a few sites that I use. Sometimes I'll just Google how to plate sushi, how to plate whatever I'm plating and I haven't plated before. And I think I've actually shown that in my video to you guys. Another good resource is The Art of Plating. I follow them on Instagram. I highly suggest that you do too, because they give you tips about not only preparing the food, but how you should present the food when you are serving it. All right, I hope I didn't ramble too much in this video. I did try to keep it quick for you. I've been told a few times I talk way too fast. I think that's why sometimes I slowly try to explain things to you because uh, I've been yelled at my whole life for just talking, talking, and talking. So anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for asking me these questions. I want to make sure when you guys are watching my videos, you're learning from them, or if you are a new corporate flight attendant out there, that these things are helpful to you. So as always, if you guys do have other questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns, post them down below for me, please. I always get back to you. Sometimes it takes a while, but I always make it happen. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel and to my social media. If you are looking for me on Twitter, I am at Jack Travels, J-A-C Travels. And if you're looking for me on Instagram, I am at Jacqueline Travels, just like I am here on YouTube. Last but not least, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thanks again.